The last time you interviewed me, you tried to make me beef with Carl Frotch. No, I never, I never. Got... <laughs> I... Boxing fans here in London for the win of Zhang versus Joyce 2 with me Tunde Ajayi. Tunde throwing punches as always. How you doing sir? Alright man, I'm alright. You managed to grab you again. Bro, you're dangerous bro. <laughs> Listen, come on. Come on, I've been around the team for a long time. I've got to do it man. Um, let's talk about, first of all, Anthony Yard fighting on the undercard of this. Boxing is boxing and sometimes you get circumstances where, you know, opponents change, opponents pull out, whatever reason. He's in that situation right now. but. Another opponent for you on Saturday night. That's the cobwebs off um, for the big fights. Uh, how is Anthony? How are, how are things in preparation for, for just this fight? Our preparation was excellent. And uh, you know, for us, it's, it's, it's never been, I'll be honest with you, we've, we only see the belt. Like, you know, when, a, when, a, when, so, when an opponent is in front of you, you just see the belt, you know. That's the vision, that's the goal, that's the ultimate destination. And so, this is not the first time this has happened to us. It's happened to us in our journey of boxing. But you can see from Ant's weight, he might as well say he come in championship weight. You know, it's only a couple of, I don't know, pounds or something. He's in shit, so he come under what he was supposed to come in at. And I feel that everyone's excited. Everyone, I'm excited to, to see Anthony back under the lights because you know he always entertains. The plan going forward, obviously, I know you guys focus on Saturday night. You're going to give me the answer Saturday night, Saturday night. But in your eyes and in Anthony's eyes, I'm sure that he's looking, uh, testing the big boys and then going for them world titles that he was very close to the last fight around. Yeah. How do you know I was going to say he focused on Saturday Because I've been around you a long time, today. <laughs> you know, You know the program. Um, yeah, I mean, listen. It's all about ambition, isn't it? You know, ambition for Anthony as a fighter, ambition for me as a trainer, ambition for the whole of us as a team. And I feel that we only see the best, we only want the best. And uh, But Anthony is the main guy. Anthony is the guy who we all support uh, in his quest in becoming a, a, a world champion. So, I don't know, you know, these, these kind of questions, it's, it's always, you're always going to get the same from me and from Anne. The answer is going to be the same. We just, we just need to focus and keep doing what we're doing. I, you know, uh, for a long time it was, you know, we haven't got the experience. And even now, even now, still, you know, Anthony, even at his age, is still learning. And he's not an old black man. You know, it's just in terms of if you look at the actual ring experience, amateur and pro. So, what's this? Ants 20. Full fight or something, 24, yeah, 24 fight, I believe. Add that to his amateur career of 12 fights. So you're you're talking about under 40 fights. This young man has challenged for two world titles um, against arguably the greatest or the best light heavyweights of the, the past 10 years. So we just gotta keep, keep going. The journey don't stop. The journey continues. The journey does continue indeed, but let's talk about the main event. Jille uh, Zhang, Joe Joyce, two big giants, um, 287 and 280 pounds, wow. that's, that's, that's big. Um, how do you see this fight playing out? We know that a lot of people that I spoke to, David Hay, there's been a lot of fighters in between, said, listen, Joe needs to move ahead a lot more this fight. Uh, in your eyes, how does this fight play out? Well, that's kind of like a cliche, isn't it? You can, just, you can go down a road, you can go down Old Kent Road and ask anyone for a game plan. They're going to tell you Joe needs to stand. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to say, Joe, needs to go down Old Kent Road, B&Q, Old Kent Road. Oh, what's the one in Seven Sisters some, someone told me about? Just go any of those places. They'll tell you the same thing. Joe Joyce has got, you know, everyone becomes Emmanuel Stewart and uh, Angelo Dundee when a boxing fight's on. So the local man on the road will tell you Joe has got to move his head and stay away from the backhand. But, you know, these, these are Olympians. These are not club fighters. These are two very experienced, um, strategic fighters and they both have a strategic team. So for me, Joe, I call him Joloff Joe Rez because Joloff, Joloff, uh, Joloff Joe Rez, Joloff, because he he's got the Nigerian, we're not, we're not forgetting our roots. I'm just telling you, we're never going to, we're never, anybody who's got the roots, don't forget. So it's Joloff, Joe Joyce. Uh, Joloff as in Joloff Rice. So anyway, I've always been a supporter of uh, Joloff Joe. Um, and I want the best for him. 
you know, he's such a, 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 a great young man um, and uh, he wants to be a world champion. But like anything in life, there's always going to be resistance. Uh, Joe, if we're talking going back to game plan and strategy, Joe needs to use that extra weight. Now 280, I think you said 280 or something like that. So that's like over 30 pounds more. That's a lot of weight. And um, I cannot for the life of me believe that the team won't be using that weight to the best advantage. And, uh, have, uh, and taking all of that into consideration, I would say Joe, Joe's best chance is taking it down the stretch. Be very careful in the early rounds. Um, obviously, stay out of the way of the left hand, uh, move his head, uh, and then wear him down, much like the Joseph Parker fight, uh, where the accumulation of punches is just too much to defend against. So, I mean, Zhang, one thing I noticed about Zhang on the scales is uh, he looks more muscular upstairs. Uh, got a bit of belly, you know, but they're heavyweights, big men, they, you know, sometimes that's the, that's the little fuel they need. But I'm looking forward to a great fight. We want to quickly talk about a few things outside this card before I let you go. Um, what do you make of this old size Fury France and Gondi event? Are you someone that's going to be watching it? Are you going to be tuning in or just watching the highlights the day after or something? Nah, nah, nah. I don't, you know when these trainers say they don't watch fighters and they watch the highlights? I think they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> they're lying, bro. Because, bro, I'm like, well, sorry, I'm saying, bro, but I'm like, how would you be a boxing fan and, oh, uh, bro, this guy is always infiltrating uh, my thing. Because, uh, what, what thing? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> AY, AY, come true, come true, come true. Come true, come true. I'm saying, now you just want to keep me here for all day. I'm going, meet me at the hotel. Uh, Alright, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah do your thing. Don't look strong. You know how it goes. A, B, C, one, two, three. You know me, big yard. <laughs> Get yourself a couple. He's a troll maker. He's a troll maker. Fix up the camera, man. Fix up the camera. Dan, you're myself. Sorry. All right, go on. I'm sorry. Fury, 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 and Arnold. Yeah. Um. As I was saying, I said I think some of these guys are lying when they say they just watched the highlights because I'm like, bro, you're a boxing fan. Like, you've got to be interested. Uh in fights and topics that are to do with the sport of boxing. This is, it may not, you know, it may not be everyone's cup of tea, but it's entertainment. It's exciting. This, this is what it's all about. It's about entertainment. And, um, and there is a, it's entertainment with a sprinkle of danger. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. It's entertainment with a sprinkle of danger. And sometimes that's all it needs, a sprinkle of danger. If Francis Ngannou lands one on the chin of Tyson Fury, then who knows what could happen. One thing we know is Tyson does have a chin, but again, we don't want to fall into that Joe Joyce scenario when they say his, his, his chin so tough he can walk through. Nah, 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 nah. It's not boxing it about that. Um, Tyson Fury has shown it he's got a chin and he doesn't need to show it no more. But what I will say is if Francis Ngannou does land a shot on Tyson Fury, it's going to be interesting. A lot of people are saying, listen, if Tyson's not going to be fighting top contenders in boxing, then maybe he just should vacate. Um, and there's, there's a few calls in boxing for that. But what, what do you make of that? Do you, do you think that if Tyson's just doing what he's doing right now, just making a bit of money, and then he needs to definitely get a serious fight, Usyk, and do what he needs to do? How did you get here today? How did I? How did you get to this venue today? I drove. Uh, did you have to put petrol in your car? <laughs> All right, I know where this is going. Huh? Go on. You have to make this? <laughs> I know where this is going. No, no, ask the question, bro. <laughs> Everyone does, yes, of bro, course. The point is, it's about money. So the people who are not happy with Tyson Fury's behavior or, or what he's doing, you have to get in the position where you're able to control that narrative. Tyson Fury has worked his way up into a position whereby now the governing bodies are giving him a leeway. It's the same can happen with Floyd Mayweather. The same happening with Canelo Alvarez. They ha have earned that right to pick and direct their careers in whichever way they so choose. And I'm like, and I know you've got a comeback, but I'm like, yes, we want to see these fights. But in the meantime, when everyone's looking at Tyson Fury, why are the other fight heavyweights getting it on? Yeah. 
the heavyweights uh, seems to be a bit slow at the top. Carl Froch is saying, listen, he is hurting the sport. A lot of fans are going against him. It seems to be that there is a, a, a negative feedback from boxing fans, not MMA fans, in regards to the fight. But do you agree with Carl in the sense that fans might be going against him uh, for this fight? The last time you interviewed me, you tried to make me beef with Carl Froch. No, I, never, never. <laughs> I just, Carl Froch is very, like, the reason why we quote Carl Froch, let me like tell you Carl. why. He's actually, he's actually, he's quite influential the way he talks about it. A lot of people are following all what he says, so we, we do listen to Carl. Yeah, well, I'm not one of them guys. I just like to stay in my lane, you know, and I, I don't like to upset no one, bro. Because <laughs> it's, right, well, it's not about that. But Carl, as I said the last time we interviewed, uh, I'm not in no position to comment on what Carl's saying. But the, I always say, all this hurt in the sport business, who feels it knows it. <laughs> Carl has never been in that position. The people commenting have never been in the position of Tyson Fury. So until you walk in a man's shoes, obviously everyone is entitled to their opinion. This is why I say I'm always going to respect Carl and his opinion. And I like Carl because I like the way he just, I'm not that guy, but I like the way he just, like, he just tells, it, tells it how it is. And you've got to respect him for that. Um, but I don't believe it's hurting the sport. I don't, because if it's not Tyson Fury, it'd be someone else. Such is the age we're living in. You know, we're living in an age where the other Fury, Tommy, can sell out an arena against a YouTuber, an influencer. So what are you telling me that? So you must get some money, and, I, and I, I'm not entitled to any of that. If I've got the pulling power, the status to do that, Tyson Fury is not running away from boxing. I don't believe that. I believe that he will get those fights and he will have those fights eventually. Tunde, always a pleasure. Uh, talk to yourself catching up. Good luck to yourself, good luck to Anthony and the team on Saturday night. And then after that, uh, let the journey continue to the top. Thank you very much for talking to Pro Boxing fans. Top man, thank you.